What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be working with Flutter. So we're coming in at day 15 of hashtag 30 days of Flutter and in this tutorial we're going to be working with block pattern once again the block library right? But we're going to be covering a core concept and that's navigation. So I want to show you how to deal with navigation when you're working with block. Now I personally think that qubits work excellent for navigation because it's really simple. You're either passing something to the next screen or you're not and you just want to simply do one thing if you are going to be navigating. You're not going to have several different events triggering all these different states um, in a very basic project. So unlike our last video where we upgraded a basic project that was using qubit up to using block, we're gonna take that same project that's using block now, and we're going to add in the navigation qubit so that we can actually move between the different screens and you can see how blocks and qubits might be working together in the same app. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. So as you can see right here, we have our same old app. We're grabbing posts from the internet, right? We're doing that networking request. We're using our, our block in order to represent the different states and things like that. What we want to do is back over here in our main is we want to also be able to handle navigation, right? So whenever I click on any of these posts, I want to go in and see the different, like the different details. So the body of the post right now, we're only showing the title. So what we need to do is let's create a new file, right? A brand new file. Now I'll just go ahead and call this nav block or nav qubit, I guess. All right, so as you can see, we just made a qubit just like we, we did before, and this one's gonna be called our nav qubit. Now, depending on how complex your navigation is, you might wanna work with a block. You might wanna be handling different events, but if you're gonna be working with an, an app that's this simple, then we can just work with a qubit since we're only gonna be dealing with whether we're showing one screen or the second screen, right? So we'll just go ahead and use a qubit in this space and we're going to be working with the state of post. So as you can see, um, adding our constructor in here, but I'm giving it a super and we're giving it a default value of null. And the reason before that is that we're saying is something selected, is a post selected or not? Do we have a selected post? If we do, then we're going to show the details, but if we don't, then we can just simply go back, right? We can just show the post. So we're gonna be working with two different functions, right? Show post details, right? Or go back to post, or well, we, we could just call it pop, right? Pop to post. And those are the two functions that we wanna call to update and manage our state in this qubit. And there we go. Now we have our nav qubit. It's this simple to just get working with navigation um, for something as simple as this. Two different screens, just specify functions on what you wanna do. Now we have the show post details, which is going to take in a post and it's going to emit that post. That means that when we call this function, we'll have a post object in our state for our qubit and we'll be able to you know, pass that in using dependency injection on a new view that's gonna show the details for that post. When we want to go back from that post, we're actually going to be using the nav bar to do this but we need to make sure that we keep our state in sync. If you wanna find out more about navigation in general using the Navigator 2.0, I have a video for that. Make sure you check that out as well. But we're gonna be going through all that in this video too. So let's go back over to our main Dart provider and we have to change this block provider to a multi-block provider. All right, so as you can see, I wrapped our block provider into this multi-block provider, and we do that by just simply specifying the different providers that we can have. Now, we still wanna have our block provider that's going to give us the post block, right? Because we still need to use that, we still need to display the post. But since it's a list of different block providers, right? That means that we can actually add in another one, which we're gonna add in our nav qubit. 
and there we go just like that we have now our nav qubit as a block being provided by our block provider and our post block being provided. Now we're still gonna keep our child as this post view because this is essentially the opening to the app, right? We're doing this on in our main file where we're gonna be showing our material app and we're specifying what home do we want and this is not gonna show anything but the child is going to be the actual widget that's going to be visible to the user. And when I saved it, nothing really happened. Uh, we just end up with the same screen. But the difference here is that we can actually use navigation. So instead of showing this post view all the time, let's show another widget that's going to handle our navigation for us. And we can do that in a separate file because we could keep our code all nice and tight and sexy, right? So let's make a, a nav, a app navigator. All right, so as you can see, we got our new app navigator class. It's actually going to be a stateless widget because once again, we got our state management outside of here, which is really awesome. And what we want to do is we want to actually implement this build method. So what we do when we're working with a navigator is we simply return the navigator itself as the widget in question, but our navigator has a property on it called pages. It's going to take in um, a list of different material pages. And then we also need to make sure that we implement this other function called on pop page. So this is going to give us two different arguments. It's going to give us a route and it's going to give us a result. So we're going to be past those two different things right here. Let's go ahead and save that, get it all updated and formatted and looking real clean, right? And when you're working with a navigator, you're essentially working with stacking the stacking of widgets or pages. So what do we want our base or our home page to be? Well, we can see that back over here in our main.dart that we want it to be our posts view. But instead of passing in post view directly, you have to wrap this in a material page. So as simple as that. So now we have our post view being the base of this pages stack, right? So that means that it's going to be all the way on the bottom. Now, what do we want to put on top of it? Well, that depends on if we have um, anything in our nav qubit state, right? So that means that we need to actually wrap this navigator in a block builder. So let's do that now. All right, so there we go. We wrapped our navigator inside of a block builder. We're gonna be working with the nav qubit this time, which has a type of post, which we're expecting for the state. Um, we could either do state or post. I think I'll just do post right here. It's way more simple and straightforward. But what we can do now that we have access to our state and we can check if the post is actually there or not, is we can add an if statement in our list, right? So we can say if post, is not equal to null, then we can show some type of different view. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create another file and this is going to be our post details page, right? So post details view like so, and let's go ahead and create that post details view. So as you can see, we now have our post details view, which is a stateless widget. Now this post details view absolutely needs to have a post in it in order for it to actually work. So we'll make sure that we have, we're passing in a post and we'll make sure that it's a required argument. And when we have that post there, then what we could do is in our build method, we could show the scaffold, we could show the center. And in, for the text, the text that's gonna be in the center of the screen, we can actually show the post body, which is gonna be like the more detailed information. And additionally to this, what we can actually do is add in an app bar, make it look real, real nice. We can say the title is actually going to be the post that title. And it's gonna be looking real fine. We just have to wrap this in a text widget. I forgot about that, my bad, my bad. All right, there we go, there we go, there we go. So now, so now let's go back over to our, our app navigator right? We have our if statement. We want to display another material page on top of our post view. And that is going to be our post details view. 
which requires that we pass in a post like that. So easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, and as you can see, we have our post details view like so, and I had to go back over here, make sure that the key is on the inside of those curly braces like so. And now, and now, if we just go ahead and save it, we save it, now we got that refactor in the reformatting, right? But what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that we can actually trigger our post to do this. So how do we actually make it so that we're updating our state in order to have the post in here at all, right? So we need to go back over to our posts view, right? Plural it up. And in our list view on our list tile, we want to add the argument of on tap. So then what we can do is we can once again access our block provider not this one. Well, it's kind of like this one right here, actually. We're going to do something just like this, but instead of working with the post block, we're going to be working with the nav qubit, right? And the reason why that works is because we added it in the multi block provider at our main, uh, in our main.dart file, which is higher up in the widget tree, which means that we're provided the access to that, that qubit. So let's add that in now. And there we go. So now in our list tile, we have this on tap function that's going to get the nav qubit from our block provider. And then we're going to call the function show post details. So we're just going to call a function as opposed to adding something because we're working with qubits, not blocks. And now if we go ahead and try to tap on something, we should actually be able to see it. So let's go ahead and do a restart. All right. And let's go ahead and tap on it and nothing happened now. Um, oh, I know what we did wrong. I know what I did wrong. We have to go back over to main.dart and we have to actually start working with our navigator, right? Because we're working with post view. So let's go and let's go ahead, add our app navigator as the child. And now if we save it, well, it's going to show the, the details because it has a post, but let's go ahead and restart. Let's get a refresh going, right? Let's, let's start from the basics, right? So now if I go ahead and tap on something, we can see that something shows up. We, we can see our details and that's awesome. Look at, look, it gives us functionality. If I hit back now, nothing's happening right here, which is bad. Cause it's like, I want to go back. I want to go back. The problem is, is that our navigator is specifically tied to our state, right? So if we go over here and we look at our app navigator, our app navigator, then we can see that our, if our post is not equal to null, then we're showing this post details view in order to fix that. Well, actually it will, it will actually start working if I do this right here, but we still need to fix this problem. So uh, did pop, right? If I do this did pop on the result, I want to show you what happens. Watch. So now if we hit back, it's going to work, but we still have a problem and it's kind of hidden. So look at everything's working right here, but we still have this problem that I was going to actually show you. Now, if I go back and I do a hot reload, what's going to happen is you're going to see it go back to the post detail screen. And the reason for that is because our state in this, in this, um, block builder, we still have a post object, right? We never sent the function. We never called the function, never called the qubit to erase that post from, from our state. So let's go ahead and take a look at our nav qubit. This pop to post was never called, which means that post is still, it still has a value in our state and we need to make sure that we call pop to post. So what we'll do in our app navigator is we'll make sure that we call that by once again, we got to get our block provider get the context and then call pop to post. All right, there we go. So as you can see, as you can see, we're finally calling this function pop to post, which means that we're going to update our state to be null. So when I do back and then I do a hot, a hot reload, it stays on our post screen, which is exactly what we wanted, right? So that's just making sure that we're cleaning up our state management, even though this route did pop, 
and then passing the result is going to handle the actual flow of our app, it's important that we keep track of the state and we update the state as needed um, to make sure that everything kind of stays consistent. So that's pretty much it. That's all I really wanted to show you was how to get up and running with navigation using the block pattern. We used qubits for this time because it was an extremely simple use case and we could continue to use qubits if we have like a pretty basic app. It's great for navigation because we don't need to pass around all kinds of different crazy states for something as simple as displaying a post list, right? We're going to be going over an example in the future where we're going to be actually using a block to handle the navigation because we're going to be going through a couple of different use cases, but that's going to be in the future video. So if you want to catch that video when it comes out, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video if you learned something. I would really appreciate it. And let me know when you're going to be using block. Are you going to be using it in your, in your ne next project? Are you using it in your current project? Is there something that I completely missed altogether? Just let me know, I would really appreciate it. So that's gonna be it for today. Have a great rest of your day and go out there and keep coding passionately.